Mr. Dev, Mr. VP Raja, my erstwhile colleagues, the organizers of this uh, conference, and friends. Uh, my impression was that uh, the energy policy uh, and its formulation is primarily a highly technical subject. But particularly after listening to Mr. Dev, uh, I find there is hardly any technology or science in it. Uh, but most of it is political manipulation. And that's a very dismal picture of the energy sector. And uh, not a person having ever dealt with any issues in the energy sector, but mostly having worked in urban development, housing, and education, uh, I find myself uh, more confused than I was uh, earlier before coming to this seminar. Uh, and therefore, don't expect anything very profound from me. Uh, I'm not abdicating uh, my responsibility as uh, the presiding or so-called chief guest, but uh, frankly, uh, the energy sector and the water supply sector, uh, and Mr. Raja was Secretary of Water Supply when he asked me to head a committee to deal with some problems in the water sector. The basic truth, the elementary truth, is that when you deal with a commodity, which is more or less an essential commodity for your for your day-to-day -day living, like water, or even for that matter, energy. Uh, you are not really dealing with with extremely complicated technical issues, but you are mainly dealing with public relations and pricing issues. Because this whole activity, whether it is water supply or electricity generation, transmission, distribution, etc., etc., all this involves certain costs. And are you in a position to pass on those costs to the consumers to make this entire activity viable? And how do you go about doing it? Frankly, I don't have the answer. Uh, and even the setting up of uh, the regulatory authorities has not taken us anywhere closer to the solution of this complicated problem. Uh, all that I can say uh, is that uh, while technical and economic aspects are coming to the fore, as we go along, the questions relating to uh, environment and sustainability are going to become more and more important. Uh, because uh, most of the sources of energy are uh, fossil fuels. And when you burn these fuels, you inevitably emit carbon and various other gases, which complicate the environmental problem. And therefore, uh, how do you gradually switch over to renewable sources of energy? And what are the problems which are going to be required to be encountered in this changeover from fossil fuels to either solar energy or other 
sources of renewable energy is, I think, the crux of the whole matter in the energy sector. And there, both the technical and the scientific inputs are going to be important, as well as uh, matters relating to uh, human relations, behavioral uh, real changes. How do you bring, bring these about? Uh, as I think one of the earlier speakers said, or the presentation said, that should we aspire to go to the, to the level of US and China, or we should be content with only 2,000 uh, units of electricity per head. Now, if that is going to be the problem, then you have to make people understand that if you want more energy, either you pay for it, or you make do with less energy, but use it more efficiently. And this is going to be the real challenge. Uh, I know, for example, my little exposure to energy sector, if I might call it, was when I was chairman of the Sai Baba Saustan, where in those days, and this was about 10 years back or more, we used to feed about 20,000 people every day, the pilgrims who used to come to Shirdi. And uh, cooking food for feeding so many pilgrims coming there, visitors coming there, required a lot of consumption of uh, LPG gas. And accidentally, I happened to go to Abugu, where uh, I found that this Brahma Kumari ashram had solved this problem by shifting to solar uh, energy. And they had put up the, the the entire solar energy installation, if I might call it that, in a manner where their entire cooking was done by converting water into steam. And with that steam, they were cooking rice, they were cooking vegetables, dal, etc., etc. The only thing which they couldn't convert was uh, roasting of chapatis because uh, that was not possible to be done with steam. But the point I'm trying to make is that after having gone to Mount Abu and seen this, we changed in Shirdi from LPG to solar uh, installation. And the saving that we got was enough to take care of the entire, that is the cost of the installation of solar uh, power could be recovered in a matter of three years. So much was the saving so, because we shifted from LPG to uh, solar power. So uh, this was a great, uh, what shall I say, enlightenment as it were for me that here is a source of energy which has not been tapped. Similarly, when uh, I was talking about, or I was trying to look at the development of Konkan area, where one of the main problems being faced is that uh, during the monsoon, when there is very heavy precipitation, and a lot of flooding takes place when intensive rain falls for two or three or four days, flooding all the rivers. And you find that in the month of March or April, there is no water to drink. So on the one hand, you have flooding during monsoon, 
and you have shortage of water in the month of April and May. And all this water is flowing down into the uh, Arabian Sea. Somehow, and I read Mr. Pense, who was formerly our Secretary uh, Irrigation, who happened to head a commission which looked at this problem and what they suggested was that the manner of dealing with this problem was entirely that of proper water management to find a solution to the problem of flooding, to ensure that the water is impounded at successive levels and is not allowed entirely to flow, flow out during those three or four months, and in the process also put up some micro hydroelectrical projects which can produce electricity uh, and then it can be supplied to the grid. Now this looked to me a very fascinating solution but somehow I am finding that there are no commercial investors who are interested in doing this. Uh, I don't know what the rate of return and various uh, uh, economic indicators are. But the problem of flooding, the problem of irrigation, and the problem of supply of energy could all be dealt with in an integrated manner through proper water management. And that was the solution which uh, the Pense Committee had suggested. So I think uh, the presentation which was made of the energy policy, which uh, looked very comprehensive, which looks at the various challenges and problems uh, which are being faced. Uh, while you have given some general solutions or overall approach which you have to have, I think you have to come to the nitty gritty of it in terms of actual implementation. And if the implementation has to be something which is going to be palatable to the people and to the politicians who ultimately uh, influence public opinion, then you have to find solutions which are not entirely uh, away from the, from the issues which the politician will look at. In the sense, you cannot divest the political interest from the economic interest. Therefore, how to bring a harmonious uh, solution to this is really the problem in the energy sector. So it has been in the water supply sector. So uh, frankly, all that we can do is to start a policy which again starts from ABC. It's not a question of mere generation. It's not a question of uh, transmission. It's not a question of uh, distribution. But it is ultimately the question of proper pricing, proper tariff determination, and creation of assets which can be sustainably managed. And this is, in fact, a very good poser, as it were, to the, to the institution from which you are holding this seminar. In the sense, it's more a problem of management. Uh, it's more a problem of scarce resources being optimally utilized. And how do you do the proper pricing? So having said this, and probably not enlightened you very much more, let me close by saying that I am thankful to the organizers for having exposed me to an area or a sector from which I was very, very distant, as it were. But this has enabled me to, uh, to look at the sector in a manner where I can learn something more. And I look forward to some interesting questions from the students and leave it to the two stalwarts uh, who preceded me. Uh, I remember that, for example, uh, Mr. Dev said, retired IS officers, which all of us are, and uh, ultimately, the, the problem of the specialist 
comes to the generalist for solution. That is the problem. Because ultimately, all solutions are not technical. All solutions are not entirely economics or finance. It has to be a, a confluence of so many uh, disciplines, as it were. And that is probably the lesson that one can take from the energy sector as not entirely a technical or science-oriented sector, but more an economic and financial sector as well. Thank you.